How's it going, friends? Reckless Yugi here. Hope you guys are doing fantastic. Thank you guys for checking out the video. I do greatly appreciate it. And in this video, we're going to be reviewing this, which is the Hori Tac Pro. And I know some of you guys have been waiting for this review. Some of you guys even subscribed to my channel for this review in anticipation. And thank you guys very much. I do appreciate the support and I hope I see your guys' continued support after this video. But anyways, before we get into the review, I want to make this disclaimer to try to ensure that I'm absolutely as completely transparent with you as humanly possible that I did not pay for this unit. This was sent out to me by Hori, which I think is really freaking cool because I personally love Hori. I loved Hori ever since I was a teenager playing the GameCube. Whenever it came to a third-party controller or basically a third-party peripheral that I needed, especially fight sticks, I always looked at Hori because they always offered excellent quality, especially the fight stick department. I love their fight sticks. But as far as this device, my opinions are a little bit different. And when it comes to mouse and keyboard peripheral on a console, my expectations are very, very high. So even though some other people might say that this product is very, very good and they absolutely love it and would highly recommend it, me, not so much, and I'll get into that in the review. Um, my expectations for a mouse and keyboard device is very high, like I said. Um, so if your expectations is something that you want is very high, then this will be the review for you because I'll kind of go over my opinions as far as what I think of the product. Um, but if you are not familiar with a mouse and keyboard on the PC or any other device, and this might be the first time you're going to be playing with a mouse and keyboard, then this might be an okay device for you. Uh, but that's just my opinion. So anyways, we're going to go over the overview of the device and kind of show you guys some gameplay and uh, kind of how it feels in a game like Black Ops 3. And then at the end, I'll put my final thoughts and conclusions on this product. And during the whole review, I kept in mind that this product costs $150 US. So that's not cheap whatsoever. That's definitely more expensive than a controller. Um, there are other peripherals out there. Um, so I definitely kept that in mind to ensure that I'm not trying to overshoot or undershoot any sort of flaw that I saw with this product, especially at that price point. But anyways, let's get into the review now. So to kick things off, we're going to focus on the keypad that comes with the HoriTac Pro. And the keypad is decently nice. As we kind of take a look around, it has a illuminated keypad that is just red LED, so it's not RGB in any way. Um, it has a wrist pad here that is able to adjust. You just press the side button and you can push it in for smaller hands or medium hands. If you have large hands, it doesn't really work too well because as you put the palm of your hand on the actual wrist portion here, your fingers kind of overshoot. So if you have large hands, then you know it might feel a little bit cramped where I have to kind of move my hand a little bit down so it doesn't actually get full support with the wrist pad that it's included with this device. If we flip it upside down, we can kind of see that there is a way for you to change it from the PlayStation 4, PlayStation 3, and the keyboard, so you can hook it up with a PC. It basically acts just like a regular keyboard, so you can use this game on the PC if you want. Um, and below that, we have the ability to switch the directional pads up here with the analog stick on the right here. So if you want to have movements like right here, if you want these to be move your movement keys, you can. Or if you want this to be your movement keys, you can and basically switch from the left stick and directional pad or the left stick and directional pad with a flip of this key here. So that is something nice. And as far as anything else, there's nothing on the bottom. Um, on the side here, there is a profile one, two, and three. Let's get this in focus real quick. All right. So we have the profile switch here. So you could change from profiles one, two, and three. You could store up to three different profiles. And on the side here, we have an assign, off, and adjust. And I'll get into that in a little bit. Then here we have a directional pad that, or I mean, sorry, the analog stick, which is a true analog stick control. It's not like the Razer Orb Weaver, where it's just a glorified eight-way directional. This is a true analog stick. So that is something that is very nice that I enjoy seeing with this product. And it does have a click if you press it in but I haven't really used it or had a need to use it. Um, if you want a L3 button, there's an L3 button on the face here, right here. So uh, it's not anything that I really was using for my own personal use. And then they have the X button right here. So that is basically on the side. And on the other side, you just have your headphone jack in which you can use for your headsets, just like you would at the bottom of a PlayStation 4 controller. Um, and then going back to the top here, gonna refocus again. All right, uh, right there, no, right there. Okay, so going over some of the features that this has, as you can see, it has a bunch of buttons at the top here. It has your touchpad from your PlayStation controller and your home button, and then it has this kind of darkened 
area over here, which will have illuminated indications to show you what you're doing. And we'll kind of go over that a little bit. And if you're curious about anything with this device, I'll leave a link to the actual instructions in English, or at least to the homepage of Hori, which they do have instructions in English this time. It's not in Japanese. So I actually know what I'm doing with this device, unlike with the TAC Pro or the TAC 4. So in order to adjust things, if you desire, you can press this down to assign, which it does turn everything off, but then you have to hold down on the touchpad and the home button. And then you have to wait until on the right here, there's going to have everything light up, which it does. And then basically what you can do is you can hold down a button and it'll show you exactly what it is. And then you move this up and down in order to change what button you want. So that's something pretty cool. And then that basically becomes that. So it's no longer R2, but it is now X. So then this is still X and this is now X. So you can basically remap everything to your desire of however you want to play your game. So that is a nice feature. And then for whatever reason, or after you're done messing with everything and you're done with it, you just switch this button back to off. And then that's basically X still as I'm moving in the game. Uh, it is definitely X, so it does save everything that you want. Now, let's say that you don't like how the way you set it up or you can't remember exactly what you did, either you messed everything up, you just basically bring this down to a sign again, and then you hold the pad and the home button for three seconds to let everything light up once again. And then you just bring it back to off, and then that should turn it back to default, which it does. So if you mess this up and you just want to turn everything back to default settings for all the profiles, that's basic procedure that you do. Now, as far as changing some things when it comes to the dead zones, as well as the acceleration of the device, the way you do that is you just flip this little switch to the adjust. And then let's say you want to change the horizontal or vertical acceleration. You basically have to either hold R2 or L2. And then you have this little indication here that will tell you by LED color of what setting it currently is on. Well, this is a 1.0 uh, acceleration. So you can bring it down to point whatever acceleration all the way down like 0.25, I believe, or you could increase the acceleration if you want and it changes by LEDs. And if you're curious on what color the LEDs are associated for what parameters, just check out the or check out the description for the instructions. It'll tell you exactly what these numbers or what these LEDs are associated with. So basically I'm just kind of showing you a quick run through of how this device is set up and how you could change some things. So that's how you change the horizontal vertical acceleration. As far as the dead zones, what you want to do is use either the uh, L3 or the uh, circle. Um, L3 is for hip fire, circles for aim down sight, dead zone um, calibration. So you can change things like that. And then for whatever reason, if you want to change things as far as DPI, that'll be on the mouse itself. But as you change the DPI of the mouse, the same little indication here at the top will change colors. So once again, look at the instructions to see what colors are associated to what parameters. So that's a basic run through of what you could expect with the actual uh, keypad. Um, as far as quality of this, it feels decently solid. I mean, like the wrist pad here feels a little bit flimsy and really plasticky. Um, but for the most part, I think it's a good quality, solid product from Hori um, as far as quality is concerned. And these keys are actually um, mechanical keys. Uh, they're not Cherry MXs. They're their own in-house brand of keys. Um, even though they're blue in color, they're not tactile and feedback in any way. They remind me a lot of Cherry MX Reds. So if you're familiar with what a re uh, Cherry MX Red feels like, that's basically what these feel like. Uh, maybe a little bit stiffer, but then again, that could be just because this is still new. I haven't worn down the keys yet, but they are very similar to Cherry MX Reds. So in case you're wondering about that. So that's basically it with the keypad. Now we can move on to the mouse which the mouse is a decent mouse. Um, it's a little bit heavy for my taste. If you want to see how heavy it is, we can just use my handy dandy scale as it zeroes out. And it is about, say about 116 grams. So if that feels a little bit too heavy for you, you could always swap out the mouse. Uh, that was another feature with this device. At the top here, there's the plug or USB plug for the mouse. 
and it says you can swap it out with whatever mouse you prefer. So if you don't like the one that comes with the unit itself, you can swap it out to a much nicer mouse, but this mouse isn't bad for the functionalities of the device. Um, if you, even if you swap it out with a nicer mouse, it's not like it's going to improve the device that much whatsoever. It's not like a Zim 4. Um, this mouse I think is more than adequate if you choose to use this device, you don't need anything more. But the mouse is decently heavy. Um, as far as the left and right clicks, um, it feels okay, responsive enough. The side buttons feel a little bit loose. Uh, but they're not bad. I mean, I'm able to distinguish them and click them and not really have too much of a concern with that. Um, and then as far as anything else with it, it just has one of these really old school LED light up sensors, um, which again, I just believe it's cheap for them to use the, something like this. Um, and it's just like a, you know, just a plastic feel. There, there is no special coating on it that I can feel. It just feels like plastic and it kind of matches the aesthetics of the keypad itself. So I think it's a good combination. As far as the cord, the cord is not braided. So if you're not into that, you don't want extra weight with a the cord, then that is definitely a plus. Um, and it has this reinforced section here, so it's not gonna wear out anytime soon. Um, so it, it's, it's an okay mouse. I have to say that it is a good mouse, especially for this unit and what you're getting. Um, the scroll wheel feels fine, scroll wheel clicks, and these are the two buttons in which you use to switch the DPI. Like I showed earlier, it will switch to indicate what color to indicate what DPI you're in. Once again, look at the instructions. It'll tell you everything you need to know. But that's a basic overview of the device, and you know, it's, it's okay. All right, so now moving into some gameplay with the mouse itself. We're just in a custom game here, so I can kind of show you guys a little bit without having to worry about other people shooting me and throwing off what I'm trying to demonstrate to you guys. So for the most part, I think a lot of people who are interested in this device might be interested in Call of Duty. And this is Black Ops 3 on the PlayStation 4. And I feel this should be a adequate test to see how good this mouse really is at mimicking that of a PC. And I am a PC enthusiast. I really do love my peripherals. If you guys watch my channel, you know that I do love mice and I'm always on the hunt for the next best greatest mice available for FPS shooters. And as far as controls with this compared to a PC, I feel it is not very good. Um, it doesn't feel as good as a PC should. Um, even if I switch down DPI, I mean, I can control it, I can aim, I'm able to aim on people, but I feel that my standards when it comes to mouse control is greater than others. I've been in close contacts with uh, some guys over at Hori as far as, you know, things to consider when trying to set up this mouse, um, settings that they recommended that I try, but everything I tried just didn't feel right. I switched the, um, I changed the DPI of the mouse. I changed the in-game settings, the in-game sensitivity, the uh, dead zones, as well as the acceleration of the unit. I've switched every combination I could possibly switch for at least a solid four hours of just sitting here, moving around, trying to get it to feel just right. And I personally could not get it to feel just right. So for me personally, I don't really like the controls of this. And I'll kind of just do a quick test for you guys. So. As you can see, I'm showing you guys the mouse and also the gameplay. And I'm just going to aim at this rock here. And I'm basically at the edge of the mouse or the edge of the mouse pad. And I'm going to move slowly to the right here and just kind of show you guys that, you know, this is a distance that I can move if I'm using this device. And then if I go all the way to the left, you know, it kind of has, <laughs> it kind of has the acceleration issues once more like that. Um, so I'll just do it again, slowly moving it to the right, slowly moving it to the right, and then fast. You know, that's a good amount of acceleration. So now let me try to just down the acceleration a bit. So as you guys saw from earlier, this is basically how I'm doing it. I'm going to lower the acceleration down to ticks and then go back into the game, go back to the same spot, and we're going to try that again. So... Uh, let's say here, uh, let's say here. So here, moving out slowly. Okay, so that's pretty slow and then just fast. So, I mean, it still has acceleration within this. Uh, now I'm gonna lower the acceleration all the way within the game. Um, down, down, 
and as you can see the LED is off now that means it's absolutely as low as I could possibly get the acceleration so then I'm going to do that again without hitting that button but uh, let's just start here moving out and as you can see as I lower that acceleration as I move the mouse like this it kind of throws off the aims like the the sensitivity I haven't changed the DPI at all but it, by lowering the acceleration, it kind of lowers this movement speed. And then if I move it fast again, I mean, that's pretty good if I have to say so myself. I mean, it, it works, okay? So now, let, let's try something else. I'm going to have the mouse right here, and then I'm going to move at a normal speed. And if you move at a normal speed, it kind of does that. But then if you try to move at a faster speed, it kind of accelerates which is something that I've been having an issue with also so it hasn't really felt perfect to me um, if you move like kind of at a normal speed and then you kind of move fast it de-accelerates if you move really 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 slow the move over it kind of accelerates depending on how you have things set up once again I spent four hours with this trying to get this game to be as good as I could I'm gonna increase the DPI of this mouse. So as you can see, I could kind of run around and look around a little bit. Um, I mean, it, it kind of feels okay, but it, it just doesn't feel perfect. And then as I go aim down sights, the aim just like goes crazy. So. As I aim down sights, you could tell that the aim just goes everywhere, and then I let go aim down sights, it just kinda does that. So the ADS and the hip fire isn't a one-to-one. -one. Um, I'm gonna jack up, make sure that this is all the way jacked up. So the DPI of the mouse is all the way jacked up. Uh, it, it basically works like that. Now let's just go to options and see if we could change around the in-game sensitivity so sensitivity in game is all the way maxed out um, so go back the dpi of the mouse is all the way maxed out and then this is how much movement i can get with the mouse like all the way de-accelerated or having the acceleration all the way off so it doesn't really give me snappy movements and if i guess press the quick key I can do something like this, but that doesn't really feel natural to me. If I was to use a mouse, I would much rather be able to just move the mouse fast in order to turn on people without having to click this button, which now just does all this crazy stuff. So having the mouse set up like this, it kind of just throws things off completely. Now I'm going to kind of turn on the acceleration again, just because that's what seems to work okay. Um, then bring this back down and so uh, bring down the DPI a little bit so that feels okay and if I move around like this in the game I can play I can aim and aim on people and like using from like right here let's let's just move it down DPI again um, so hip fire from here to aim down sights isn't too much different but then, like I said, again, you get the weird acceleration, deacceleration issues where if you move really slow and then you move fast, it accelerates. And then if you move at a normal speed and then you try to move fast, it deaccelerates. <laughs> so, I mean, it's it's a weird thing with this mouse. Um, I think it is an improvement over the TAC 4, but it definitely is a far cry from the PC. So if you are used to the PC, if you're buying this peripheral, because you want it to mimic that of a PC, I think you'll be kind of disappointed. And the way in order to get this to work is you have to basically change the way you play. Um, you have to change the way you're supposed to interpret how a mouse is supposed to move, uh, which is definitely kind of a bummer. Um, and then let me make sure that I have the horizontal. Okay, so both these are at the same. Now I'm gonna do some circular motions to show you guys how this kind of represents. If anyone knows on the PC, if you move this mouse in a perfect circle, you basically get a perfect circle on the screen, all right? And with this, if I try to move it in a circle, I get this like weird oval horizontal where the vertical movements don't match up the horizontals at all. 
Like, it, it makes it really frustrating. So especially in a freaking game like this where people are jumping around like crazy, I'm sure it's even worse than Infinite Warfare. Um, if someone jumps and you're trying to aim at them, it kind of throws it off a little bit where you don't get that one-to-one -one ratio. So that's something else to really consider about this device is if someone jumps up, I mean, you can learn to do that, but uh, depending on where you are, so if you're like kind of, I guess like turning to the right and trying to aim up, it might throw you off a little bit. So, I mean, this is just one of the things that kind of bugged me is that it wasn't, you know, a perfect ratio as far as a circle. And let's just do a big circle, just to kind of show you guys. So moving down then big circles so i mean it's it just it feels it feels weird it's just it just definitely does feel a little bit weird uh so i mean yeah i mean you can play with this it's not impossible i've been playing in a pri in a public match um trying to kill as many people as i could but it just didn't really feel very good and i always had to kind of guess myself whenever i was moving the mouse it just definitely didn't feel as solid i wasn't sure exactly how my mouse was going to behave how the aim was going to behave compared to how i moved the mouse so i feel that there was like a lot of hesitation slash readjustments that i was doing in order to aim on target now as far as is this better than a you know a controller with an analog stick i think so especially if you're used to a mouse i think this is better <laughs> but I'm not sure if this is a good replacement to a PC, and I feel that there are other products out on the market that do a better job of mimicking a PC-like controls for people who want to play mouse keyboard on the consoles. So anyways, so this is just some sample gameplay of Black Ops 3 with this device, and like I said, I spent a lot of hours trying to customize this and to massage it to work with this game but I really haven't been able to find a perfect balance between the dead zones and the uh, acceleration uh, settings with this device. All right, so welcome back and welcome to the conclusion of the video where I basically put my final two cents on the product and whether or not I think it's worth it or not. Um, on the back of the device, it says engineered for FPS domination. Does Hori accomplish that with the TAC Pro on the PlayStation 4? In my opinion, no. Like, I'm going to be completely honest. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I freaking love Hori. I love their fight sticks. I love their peripherals. And it's a company that I truly respect. But when it comes to a mouse and keyboard peripheral, I demand mouse and keyboard performance like on the PC. And the reason why I demand this is because there are other peripherals out there that give you a better experience, in my opinion, but also at a higher cost. Now this unit is $150 MSRP, and if you are coming from just purely console and you have never used a mouse and keyboard before for an FPS game, I'm not talking about you know mouse and keyboard on a computer when you just you know do daily internet browsing and things like that, that doesn't count. I'm talking about people who really try to master an FPS game on the PC and try to get as much performance as they possibly can with a mouse and keyboard. Um, those people are not going to be satisfied with this product. I personally am not satisfied with this product. But if you're out there very novice when it comes to mouse keyboard, you don't know what to expect. You just want something that kind of gives you a little bit better control than an analog stick on a, on a controller. Then it's an okay product in my opinion. I could see myself using this product if I wasn't familiar with a mouse and keyboard. But because I am familiar with mouse and keyboard, my demand is just so much higher than other people out there. So. For me personally, if you are in high demand for a precision product that gives you precision aim above all else, it's not the product for you. And I'm sorry that I have to say that, especially for anyone watching at Hori. Uh, I do want to love this product very much, but I can't honestly, for my own integrity, endorse it for anyone out there who's looking to have a quality mouse and keyboard experience on the console. Uh, and I've spent hours with this device, even in Black Ops, are Black Ops 3 and also in Battlefield 4 because I feel Battlefield and Call of Duty are the two games that people are really going to use this product for. So if this doesn't work with those games, then I don't think that it's something that I could very much recommend. Even if I try it with other games, if I get Doom or, I don't know, other FPS games out there, it doesn't matter because I feel that Battlefield and Call of Duty should be the games that it works the best with because those are the biggest selling FPS games on the consoles and you know, in my opinion, that's what people will buy this unit for. So that basically concludes my opinions. No, I don't think it's worth it for the hardcore enthusiasts out there. But if you have never used the mouse keyboard before and you want to just throw away $150 and try it, 
you might enjoy it. Like, honestly, you might enjoy it. And I know there are people in the comment section that will disagree with me, telling me I'm an idiot because that's what they said in my last video with the Hori TAC 4, that I'm an idiot and it works perfectly for them. And if that's true for you, then that is freaking cool. But for me, it doesn't. And that's my opinion. So that's what I'm going to stick with. Um, if you guys are interested to see how this compares to the Hori TAC, or Hori TAC 4, uh, compared to the Zim 4, compared to the PC, I'll basically just do a run through of how it kind of controls versus those other devices to kind of see i guess kind of explain and show and demonstrate why my expectations are so high but anyways that's enough of a rant for this product uh i know this video is probably decent, decently long um but that's my true unbiased opinion so thank you guys very much for watching i do greatly appreciate it hope to see you guys in the next video thank you for watching bye